Hello, my name is Jared Ludlow, Publications Director at the BYU Religious Studies Center, your weekly resource for gospel scholarship. Today I'd like to share some articles that accompany the Come Follow Me reading for October 21st through 27th, 3rd Nephi 27th through 4th Nephi. The first one is called The Socioeconomics of Zion. It's by Warner P. Woodworth, a former business faculty member here at BYU. And it comes from a volume the RSC published called The Book of Mormon, 3rd Nephi 9-30, through 30, This is My Gospel. And here's some points he makes. A major theme underlying Christ's visit to the Americas is the establishment of Zion. And in this article, he explores key scriptural aspects of how God's people lived after the manner of happiness. Then he also traces the unfortunate decline of Zion, and concludes with a discussion of the implications of 4th Nephi for us today. He states that many seekers of the good life, regardless of sincere intent and or noble desires, are tossed to and fro like small boats on a stormy sea. The message of 4th Nephi suggests that utopia ultimately must be grounded in the gospel of Jesus Christ. By so doing, the ultimate good society, Zion, can become a concrete reality, rather than an evasive ideal, and can last for centuries, blessing all who live therein. So he examines uh, some core dimensions of religious practice and socioeconomics, which 4th Nephi reveals as factors in building utopian or Zion society. And these are spiritual conversion, social relationships, having all things common, no rich or poor, humility, priesthood power, moderate wealth, work, and pure in heart. And here's some of his conclusion. The Book of Mormon reveals the crux of what we need to do currently to truly become a Zion people today. The Lord now requires of us the transformation of our lives and the creation of a genuine community of saints. To do so will only be possible through the concentration of our moral and economic energy and the consecration of all we have and are to the building of the kingdom of God on earth. From Enoch to the saints in the book of Acts, from Alma to the era of 4th Nephi, this constant theme runs throughout sacred scripture and into our day. The second article is called, There Was No Contention. It's by Byron Merrill, an ancient scripture faculty member here at BYU, and comes from the same volume. And here's some points he made. Appearing repeatedly in the book of 4th Nephi is a phrase which speaks to the heart of what Zion was and will be occurring three times in its singular form and once in the plural within the first 18 verses this phrase explains a primary reason for the blessed state enjoyed by the nephites as well as the results which flowed therefrom the phrase simply reads there was no contention without exception in the book of mormon the word contention refers to conflict in which heated passions play a part the word is modified by adjectives such as serious warm exceedingly sharp, much, and great. And then he says, If contention and anger are so strongly condemned by the Lord, what underlying attitudes tempt us to embrace them? One of the foremost is pride. So here's some of his conclusion. Mormon tells us what will come from obedience. It came to pass there is no contention among the people in all the land, but there are mighty miracles wrought among them. Imagine the marvels and wonders the knowledge and majesty which the Lord bestowed upon this people because of their righteousness. It takes faith, hope, and charity to obtain such bounteous blessings and participate in such mighty miracles. It will require opening our hearts to Christ without reservation for us to so partake. For the same promises and possibilities are extended to us by that same Lord, conditioned on obedience to the same commandments. We will be ready and willing to love so that we will have no contention, but will live with surpassing joy. The third article is called This is My Gospel. It's by Robert Millett, a former religion faculty member here at BYU, and comes from a volume the RC published called A Book of Mormon Treasury, Gospel Insights from General Authorities and Religious Educators. And in here he talks about the context of 3rd Nephi 27, 1 through 3, where the living Christ sets forth some of the most straightforward yet profound doctrine to be found in the entire Book of Mormon concerning the name and mission of the church, which of course President Nelson has re-emphasized in our day. 
He states that the church or body of Christ is a true and living thing only to the degree that it is imbued and animated by Christ. Like an individual, the church must take upon it the name of Christ, his divine influence, attributes, and nature, in order to enjoy his transforming power. He also states that we learn that although being called after Christ's name is a necessary condition for it to be his church, such is not sufficient. The resurrected Lord stated, If it be called in my name, then it is my church, if it so be that they are built upon my gospel. So anyone can organize a church, anyone can name that church, the Church of Jesus Christ, and yet, as the Master affirms, it, is, it will not be his church unless it is built upon his gospel. So he concludes stating, The gospel is the glad tidings concerning the infinite and eternal atoning sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. The atonement is central. It is the hub of the will. All other matters are spokes at best. The good news is that we can be changed, be converted, become different people in and through Christ. The good news is that we can come to perceive an entirely new realm of reality, a realm unknown to the world at large. It is a new life, a new life in Christ. In a time of stress and great uncertainty, thanks be to God for the peace and joy of the Spirit that can come to us through Christ and his gospel. In a day when we encounter somber and soul-stirring headlines on almost every page of the newspaper, God be praised that the good news of the gospel has been restored in our day through modern witnesses of Christ. Quoting from John 16, In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Christ our Lord has overcome the world, and he has opened the door and made available to us the power to do the same. And surely there could be no better news, no more joyful tidings than that. <laughs>